If you've been looking for a soundbar to up your TV volume, you really need to check out the Klipsch RP600Ms, and I'll tell you why right after the jump. What's up YouTube, Chana D, your techno dad here. And before we begin, I'd like to thank my man Corey for sending these RP600Ms in for review. If you're looking to buy any Klipsch speakers, do yourself a favor and contact Corey for the most updated pricing. His link is in the description. In the box, we get speakers, grills, some documentation, and four rubber feet for each speaker. First thing I notice is that these are pretty big and coming in at 16 pounds, they feel very robust. The finish on these are gorgeous and the copper accent ring around the woofer and tweeter really step up the looks from the previous reference premiere line. On the front of the speaker, we have a one inch titanium vented LTS tweeter. LTS stands for linear travel suspension, which minimizes distortion for enhanced detail. The tweeter is loaded into a 90 by 90 silicone composite Tractrix horn. Below that, we have a six and a half inch Sara metallic cone woofer. On the back, we have a large tractor support and dual five-way binding posts for those that like to buy amp or buy wire. The RP600Ms have a frequency response of 45 hertz to 25 kilohertz with a crossover set at 1500 hertz between the tweeter and woofer. The 600Ms are an eight ohm speaker with sensitivity of 96 decibels and a power handling of 100 watts continuous and 400 watts peak. Now that you've got an overview of the speakers, let's talk about what I had them connected to. First, I had them connected to an Emotiva XPA9, and the single channel modules are pushing 300 watts into 8 ohms. Also, I had this connected up with the Denon X6500H running in full range and in stereo, so it should be pushing 140 watts into each speaker. And of course, both of these will run in full range without a subwoofer. So for the past three weeks, I've had these speakers hooked up to my system and we've watched a ton of TV and movies. And of course, I've listened to a lot of music. Now, if you guys wanna know what my demo tracks are for music and evaluating speakers, I made a video about it and I made playlists on both Tidal and Spotify. So I'll put links down in the description to the actual playlist and of course, the video that takes you through track by track and what to listen for on your system. I'll also put a card up top as well. As for TV watching, I was very surprised with the RP600Ms. Now I know there's a lot of channels that have some harshness and a lot of highs, and I think that's just not mixed right or mixed well, or at least they're not mixed for a hi-fi system. They're just mixed for like using on TV speakers. And we all know with the way TVs are going these days, they're getting thinner and thinner. The speakers are getting smaller and smaller. They point them downward. And you know, the audio experience on new TVs is just thin, you know, it's really, really thin. And as far as TV is concerned, my wife loves to have the TV on while she's cooking or just while she's in the house. So I'll say about seven plus hours our TV's on and the highs weren't as harsh on the certain TV shows and channels that I know always have like harsh highs on other speakers that I've reviewed. So the RP600Ms did great for TV viewing. As for movies, again, I was impressed by the 600Ms. Now they did rival speakers costing just about double the price. Like the SVS Ultra Bookshelf, the Kef R300 and the DefTech D11s, which I have all in house. Now these Klipsch RP600Ms, I actually liked them for movies more than I liked those other three speakers and brands. And mind you, these RP600Ms cost about half the price. So that's always good. You know, you get a better experience with a speaker that costs half the price. Pretty awesome, right? Now I know what you guys are saying. You're probably wondering if you need a subwoofer for movies. If you want that rumble, definitely add a subwoofer. However, the bass is actually really, really good on these speakers, especially if you have it set up right. Now, one thing is for sure, if you're looking for a sound bar, you know, in the $800 and above range, you definitely need to get these RP600Ms on your list with like an AV receiver or an integrated amplifier, something around the $300 price point. And I guarantee you, you will have a way better experience with that setup than you would with any sound bar. Now, the best part is with these older AVRs, and I'm not talking super old, maybe like two years ago, like the Denon X2400H because they still sell that and it's pretty cheap. I'll put a link down in the description. Best part is you can add a subwoofer to that 
and you know you'll have a 2.1 system and then later on if you want to get you know further along then you can add a center channel now you've got a 3.1 you've got a complete front stage and a subwoofer it's going to be way better than soundbar and it may not be immediate but trust me it's going to be way better now speaking of bass let's move into the music now i went through my demo music which is about three hours and i just kept listening to music over and over like i just kept listening to the songs over and over and i was like oh man i only got an hour left i was running out of time i had other things to do but i just kept listening to music and that's always a good sign when i'm evaluating speakers as for the highs i didn't really hear much harshness in anything from florence and the machine lungs album and kings of leon now both of those albums that i put on screen they have a lot of brightness in the two to six thousand hertz range and that can really be super harsh because it's pretty much all tweeter remember the crossover is at 1500 hertz so it's pretty much just all tweeter and on the previous reference premiere line i did notice some harshness it wasn't overly harsh but on those albums specifically definitely harsh not so harsh on this new tweeter setup that they've got for the new reference premiere line so that is really really good as far as bass is concerned it was tight and punchy on tracks like trip like i do 10.8 hotel california and giorgio by marauder and on the flip side it was actually like warm and buttery smooth on tracks like high roller blank em only we know by banks doing it right and do you like bass too now that last song was one of the songs i used to use in my car audio days to actually test my setup and if you didn't know if i hadn't explained it i had three jl 12w6s built into this tire well of my acura integra and uh it was pretty awesome. It was pretty banging, like 900 watts, Rockford Fosgate. Anyway, that's a song I used to test out bass with. I added that to the playlist on both Spotify and Tidal, so definitely check it out, you bassaholics. These speakers seem to be very versatile and handled every piece of content I threw at it very well. So to compare these with the previous reference premiere line, I think they made great headway in the tweeter design. They vented it and they made the surround with silicone instead of rubber, which greatly reduces the amount of harsh harmonics emanating from the horn. I think Klipsch did a great job quelling the main gripe people have about horn loaded tweeters. Normally when a company upgrades their speaker line, it's usually an incremental upgrade, but I think Klipsch stepped it up a few notches with their new tweeter and horn design. Whatever harshness I experienced in my RP280F, which was apparent on certain content, is pretty much non-existent with this new tweeter design. If you're looking to spend $800 or more on a soundbar, you should definitely look at the RP600Ms with a two-channel amp or budget AVR. Something like the Yamaha WXA50 would work out perfectly. 55 watts per channel into eight ohms with two channels driven, optical input for your TV, stream with Bluetooth for your phone or tablet, works with Alexa and has a subwoofer pre-out. Something like this or an older AVR, like a Denon X2400H, which is now discontinued, but it's on a big discount at Amazon while supplies last. Or even an Onkyo TX8140 two-channel network receiver, which is also pretty cheap on Amazon. Links are down in the description. Of course, you should contact my man Corey for the most updated pricing on these 600Ms or any Klipsch speaker on your list. Again, big shout out to Corey for sending these in for review. Thanks, buddy. And if you guys have any questions for me about these speakers or anything else, hit me up down in the comments below or on social or email, whichever you like to use. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad, and I'll see you next time.